I've been studying and reporting on Valve software for about a decade now, and it is safe to say that the movements that the company has made over the last few weeks have been incredibly out of character. Yes, they are now announcing and going to be releasing the first Half-Life game in over a decade. However, there is much more going on behind the scenes and publicly that has not been the norm for Valve for a very long time, if ever. So what exactly is going on? Why is it that it seems like Valve is changing? And will these changes actually stick? This is the new Valve. <laughs> To start, Half-Life Alex had a trailer. Now this seems obvious to so many people, but it needs to be stated for the longest time, the development team behind the game thought all they had to do was drop the game on Steam without any fanfare, and the largest game advertisement platform ever would take care of the rest. Thankfully, someone at Valve saw the value in creating a trailer, hyping up that trailer a few days before, because now we have a video with nearly 9 million views and Valve unable to keep up with the index demand. So what exactly happened here? It's no secret that for the longest time, Valve as a whole was scared of public communication. There are a few reasons why. Number one, everybody always claims that if Valve was publicly communicating about their own projects, they would pollute the communication of the communities. Because Valve likes to lurk and look around at what everybody is talking about in relation to them in order to be able to collect what they call data on what the community wants. It has been a long-held belief that if any Valve employee participates in these conversations, everybody would try and be on their best behavior, and the information that they tried to collect would not be accurate. At the same time, it's fairly well known that there have been a few major figureheads at Valve essentially gatekeeping all external communication, attempting to keep employees off of social media platforms, even in relation to their personal lives, and never taking questions or answering any emails or interviews unless unless it's time to actually talk about a product. This has changed. The people who have been gatekeeping the communication, whomever they may be, seem to be losing strength because as a whole, Valve Software is an incredibly communicative company, at least in the last month. Let's go over everything that's been going on. Counter-Strike Global Offensive has been active for about six months, not only teasing future updates and taking community questions from time to time, but also memeing with community figureheads. They also were able to get a hold of at CSGO and verify their account. We have the Steam team not only hyping up future updates to Steam as a whole through things like Steam Labs and the Steam Beta Client, but also communicating about all upcoming features, game sales, and events on their new active Twitter account that recently got a hold of the at Steam Twitter handle. Once again, verified. Dota Underlords has not only been active on their Twitter account with updates and teases to future content, but on their own Discord account. You see, for people that don't follow Underlords, there is actually an official Discord that is moderated by the community, but has over 15 of the Underlords team members as active members of the server. Couple all of this with the recent creation of an official verified Valve software Twitter account, at Valve Software, and Valve's current behavior is night and day with its previous behavior. Who is to thank for all of this change? You can't attribute it to a single person, even though I'm going to try to right now. If you are a fan of the International, Casey is the person that hosts the International alongside Sir Action Slacks and has for years. She is a fan favorite, and also a favorite of Valve themselves. So it's excellent that she recently got hired as a full-time employee for the Steam business development team. Essentially Valve's PR arm, but just for Steam. But here's the thing. She was hired as Steam Business Development, but she is doing far more than that. I'm gonna let you behind the scenes here for a minute. There is an official Valve Press email. It emails all major journalists that are on its mailing list with updates to events and the press releases and media kits, etc. I've been on this list for about three years now, and it's always been incredibly unhelpful. The press emails are always late for people that actually pay attention, and there is no form of communication past the press release. It historically has been run by Doug Lombardi. In fact, it's actually Doug Lombardi's own email account that's used as the press email officially. That was until Half-Life Alex was announced. The press email that announced Half-Life Alex was signed by Casey, not Doug. Not only that, but Casey put contact information after her own name and responds 
to inquiries that people send her. Speculation, I think there is a correlation between Casey getting hired as a full-time employee and Valve deciding to actually run a trailer for Half-Life Alex at the same time they open an officially verified Twitter account at the same time that Valve employees immediately became active on Twitter. This was something else that happened. At the same time that Half-Life Alex was announced to be legitimate, over 50 different Valve employees immediately started talking about their time at Valve, and some Valve artists actually started tweeting their own personal art completely separate from Half-Life Alex, taking place in the Half-Life universe. This has never happened before. Some ex-Valve employees of nearly two decades, like Matt Wood, was surprised that they were doing this, stating that during his time at Valve, this kind of behavior was discouraged for a very long time. So things are changing. And since from the outside looking in, it appears that Casey has had a wonderful effect on the company, I have a major question. She has been hosting the International for years years, and she's only just now been hired. Why wasn't she hired before? Because I know everybody loves her. Everyone in the community, including myself, loves this person. I know that a lot of people at Valve have excellent things to say about her, especially those that have worked on the International and find her very easy to work with and find her very easy to add into the company culture. Why did this take so long? And lastly, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Everybody should know by now that Jeff Keeley is very busy right now putting together the Game Awards, and during the Game Awards, we will be seeing new stuff from Half-Life Alex and possibly have an interview with somebody from Valve, probably Gabe Newell. Jeff Keeley, after the Game Awards is wrapped and after the holiday season is over, will be getting to work in earnest on the final hours of Half-Life Alex, which is his huge historic documentary on the first Half-Life game in over a decade to release at the same time as Half-Life Alex in March. We've already heard that not only will this report cover Half-Life Alex's development, but also all of the games that led up to Half-Life Alex, including a lot of shelved projects that eventually created what we now know as Source 2. So this essentially means that the final hours of Half-Life Alex will include information on Half-Life 3, Left 4 Dead 3, and probably a lot of other things I don't even know about. Jeff Keighley recently did an AMA where I asked if Jeff could release some of the Half-Life 1 alpha discs that he's kept for over two decades. He said that it wasn't his decision, and Valve would have to allow that to happen. However, he has been talking with Valve about trying to get some playable content added into the final hours. Okay, so before we move on, first of all, if you want to see complete alpha builds, four different builds from Half-Life 1 between 97 and 98 be released, let Valve and Jeff know. It could very well happen. So the most important part of all of this is that this recent want to communicate about previously shell projects is not something that is happening specifically to Jeff. I have heard this four different times. Valve is now seeing value in openly discussing prior canceled projects and prior shell projects with the public in order order to be able to A, get community feedback on the major design decisions of those projects to then be reused in future projects, and most importantly, B, find out which projects have the most value to be picked back up and released. So, following the release of Half-Life Alex, you will be seeing a lot on Half-Life 3, Left 4 Dead 3, and many other cancelled projects. And it is your job as the Valve community to talk about them give feedback on them, and let Valve know which ones you truly want to see out, because they might actually be released. And finally, I need to state that Valve does have a virtual reality problem. I've mentioned this before. No one at Valve thought Half-Life Alex was going to be as well received as it ended up being. It's no secret that Valve didn't even think they needed to manufacture more indexes than they already had for this holiday season with the idea that they would have been announcing Half-Life Alex anyways. There were quite a few people, especially higher up, that thought because they were making a Half-Life game in VR, they would have just had a repeat 
of artifact. This didn't happen. And I will go into the specifics of this situation, but what needs to be stated is Valve now has a release problem. Valve a week before the trailer and Valve a week after the trailer are two completely different companies. For the longest time, I always heard that Half-Life Alex was the only VR game they were going to be doing because they realized that the medium was slowly dying. Now, they realize they just reinvented and reinvigorated the entire medium single-handedly, and everybody is seeing value in what is now a huge install base for enthusiast-level VR. Problem is, it's going to take about two years for the other companies to be able to release things on par with Half-Life Alex. So you have a huge void in releases. Because after Half-Life Alex, what exactly is left for people that just dropped a thousand plus dollars on a VR system? People don't want to have spent a thousand dollars on what will eventually just be one single game. That means that they're pulling previously shelved content and pushing it out as quickly as they can. So it is your job as the Valve community to give proper, respectable, data-filled feedback on everything you might hear. Make sure that you let Valve have the best platforms for outward communication that they could possibly have, or else we might scare them off entirely. It's now in your hands.